Good morning and welcome back now to the reading of God's Word. And we're at the end of the week here now, still reading in Ezekiel. And we're going to be in Ezekiel chapters 33 through 39. Pretty busy reading right here. Uh, we'll enjoy this as you read through it. Now we move really from the prophecies of, the, of all of the denunciation and, and, the, and the destruction of the nations or whatever. Ezekiel begins to move here in chapter 33 and beyond, looking at the restoration of Israel. Is there's still a lot of there's still some some, some bad prophecies in here, but by by and large he begins to look at the future, things that are going to be repaired, replaced. Um, uh, some of God's work in restoring Israel. So we kind of get this this movement here towards that um, uh, towards that emphasis. And it is kind of interesting uh, if you take a little bit of a history lesson right here. You know, all these nations fell by Babylon, and it was under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, after he died, he ruled for forty five years. So all of this what we were, talk, we were talking about previously came into the Babylonian Empire. Well, after uh, Nebuchadnezzar died, it was only about 25 years later that the Medo-Persian Empire destroyed the Babylonian Empire. Well, along with the Medo-Persian Empire, who was the one who was the king? That would be Cyrus. Remember Cyrus? He was prophesied 150 years earlier by Isaiah, who would be the ones to, after the 70 year of exile, release the Jews back to Jerusalem. So this is part of that restoration. This will be the, you know, the early event of the restoration of Israel. Uh, there's a lot more coming, and we'll, we'll, he'll make reference to uh, the millennial kingdom, the millennial restoration uh, here in these chapters. But anyway, we imagine, imagine that, that, that Cyrus would be... Uh, coming along here and to, to implement exactly what God had said was going to happen. So we look back at chapter 33. This is a famous chapter here about uh, Ezekiel being the watchman. Of course, he's told to tell uh, all of everyone in Israel, you know, to warn them about what they're doing. And, and if you tell them and they don't listen, then, this, then their blood is on their hands. But if, if you don't tell them, then the blood is on your, their blood is on your hands. And so, it, so that discussion goes. And, but I want to just pause right here. And I want to do, read just a few things right here in that chapter 33 uh, to pay attention to. And here in chapter 33, verse 7, Now as for you, son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel, so you will hear a message from my mouth and give them warning from me. Now drop down to 11, chapter verse 11. Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his ways and live. Look at verse 12. And you, son of man, say to your fellow citizen, the righteousness of a righteous man will not deliver him in the day of his transgression. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, he will not stumble because of the day when he turns from his wickedness. This is, this is the messages that uh, Ezekiel is given, uh, told to give. Then look down in verse 20. Yet you say, the way of the, the Lord is not right, O house of Israel. I will judge each according to his ways. Does that sound familiar? We go all the way back to chapter 18. For that, that every man will be judged for his own actions. So chapter 33, pretty busy right there in, in a warning uh, as, as God begins to do the restoration here. And in chapter 34, comparison of the false shepherds to the true shepherds. This is pretty straightforward reading as you get into chapter 34 and a direct reference to Christ as the true shepherd, which will come in the millennial reign. So pay attention to that. Uh, again, that, that's pretty straightforward. It is a fulfillment of the Davidic covenant too. So uh, just, just know that as you're, as you're reading it. Moving into chapter 35, God tells Edom, which is Mount Seir, that they will be destroyed. Now, Obadiah, the, the minor prophet, he has a lot to say along this line too. So if you get a chance, you can fast forward up to Obadiah and see what he says about 
you know, and they were always felt secure and they, they always felt like that they were, they, they could not be defeated because of their geography, their, their location and the heights of the cliffs and so forth around them. Uh, but God would overthrow them anyway. Why? Because they were, they, they saw in the, in the destruction of Jerusalem and Israel that they decided, well, we're going to get some of this land and take some of this stuff. Well, God said, no, you're not. So he pronounced then the, uh, the destruction of Edom there in chapter 35. And again, 36, chapter 36, a powerful discussion here of God's plan to purify the nation and the land. This is a kind of a long discussion here, but really what he's doing is making reference to the millennial reign again is just how much purification is going to take place and that Israel would never again have an adversary. Everything was going to wind up. They would live in peace during that time. Very, very promising uh, chapter right here, chapter 36. And then another famous chapter, 37, here we have the dry bones, talking about the dry bones. Can these bones live? And, and Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. And so it talks about the dry bones coming back and joining themselves to the other and the sinew getting on to them and then finally getting their skin. So what this is, is basically the regeneration of the nations of Israel and Judah and them coming back together. It would all, these, these two nations would become one nation again, like they should be or should have been before the divided kingdoms. And then the, my servant David, okay, go back to the Davidic covenant again, my servant David. This of course is a direct reference to Jesus coming in the millennial reign to watch over them. So this, all of this here, chapter, chapters 33 and then through 37 here, we have a lot of promise coming back in here as far as that's concerned uh, with with the restoration of Israel. Then we get to chapters 38 and 39, Ezekiel 38, 39. I don't know how in two chapters that have had more attention than these two chapters as far as prophecy is concerned. And it has to do with Gog and Magog. And we do not have the time here to go into a lot of eschatology about what this means but it is very, very interesting uh, when you read it. And it goes in you know, the hall of the scriptures as it relates to the tribulation period in the book of Revelation. This is, it, it, it ties in with Revelation and uh, in, in what what's going on there. But now the, pay attention here that in this reference, it has to do with particular area or a land. And over in Revelation, it, it mostly has to do with the enemies of Christ. So this is a little bit different here when we talk of Gog and Magog here and Gog and Magog in Revelation here. But it is, it is very interesting. You, you, you sort of um, pay attention here. Gog, of course, is the leader and Magog is the land by, of whatever it is, the countries that he is leading. And if you read, do the research in this, and this gets into something that you know, we really don't want to, but, but I would mention here that uh, those places are all the places around the Caspian Sea, east of the Caspian Sea, and nations around the Black Sea. And so what you see right there is Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Georgia, Turkey, uh, and it also mentions Put, which is Libya, and Ethiopia down to the south and over in Africa. So you see this region. Now these up in the north, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, all of that, there's a lot happening right now in that area. And Russia is trying to take that entire region back over again. So uh, that'll give you kind of a, a, a thought uh, for there. So the short answer here is that this will be a very volatile region in there in this Gog Magog issue that's going on. Um, going to be a lot that's going to be happening there. Um, and it will, when we get into as far as the tribulation side, that Gog and Magog, that war will happen now for the most of the seven years of the tribulation period. So this is not just a one time event. Uh, this is this, this is this is spread out pretty wide. 
So without saying too much, really, just keep your eyes on what is happening right now just north of Israel. That is a very important thing. Never take your eyes off of Israel as it relates to history and events that are going to change the world. So be careful with that. Um, also go back and review Matthew 24, um, you know, just, uh, just to look and, and get an idea of birth pains that are happening. It's a very interesting time, and it is, it is pretty interesting reading. That's Ezekiel 38 and 39. So I pray that you pray that you get uh, a lot of understanding and, and discernment from this uh, as, we, as you see these prophecies that were given and has happened, yet we have prophecies that have not yet happened. So one validates the other. Uh, pay attention. This is not going to go unnoticed by God by any means. So, uh, And with that, uh, may God bless the reading of his word.